Hello, my name is Tony Jasper and I'm the leader of the Global Employer Services team at Deloitte for Greater China. I like the interaction with people um, and so having to do all of this over a video screen was never the easiest of things. So not having that connectivity for me was personally very difficult, but it also reminded me that when you're working with people and when you're working with teams, each person operates in a different way. Um, and I was very mindful that uh, there would be people that would be missing out on some of that connectivity with their friends and their colleagues, but also that connectivity to role models within the team or to um, slightly more informal ways of uh, encouraging and developing people. You know, I run a business that is very much around building relationships and face-to-face -face meeting. We meet people every day as part of my role, um, and that stopped. I have become quite adept at these types of tool and the video content tools that we, we now use day to day. Um, and what was really interesting for me was we run a lot of lab sessions, so bringing together people to think through challenges and problems in a slightly more creative way. Um, and we did a lab session about two weeks ago, nine hours in total, um, using ex exceptional tools to interact with the people, to whiteboard, to brainstorm, uh, take it under, into breakout group. It really felt to me um, like I was in the room. So I've been amazed at what tools are out there to, uh, to really keep that connectivity with clients, even in a virtual world. I'm working through with clients what it means if an individual that was supposed to be in, in one market is now displaced in a, a completely new market where you maybe don't even have operations. Instead of just this forced uh, displacement of people, it's now looking a slightly more elective way. So what if I choose now for the rest of the year to base myself in Thailand or base myself in France? What does that mean for an organization? How do I build out uh, not only the regulatory policies to support that and address potential, potential tax exposures or compliance exposures, but also how do I, um, if I treat that as the norm, how do I motivate those people? How do I pay those people? How do I drive their performance? So the space has gone from one quite fearful to one uh, much more strategic in, in terms of what the future might look like. What we would call in Deloitte inclusive leadership um, and I've actually started to, to train myself or develop myself as a coach within that. Um, and I think what's particularly important um, around in doing that has been to recognize uh, leadership styles reflect very differently. And, th and there's a lot about inclusive leadership in being um, very authentic, in being very real with your people that enables them to open up a little bit. And, we, and interestingly, from my standpoint, that means that you can tackle very different cultures um, uh, in a much more appropriate way by kind of reducing the hierarchies a little bit. To me, it's been about adaptability of leadership styles and, um, and wellness focus. So find ways to slightly more privately connect with those individuals, either um, through their through their teammates or through uh, different communication tools.